Have you ever tried turning it off and on again? Or a few thoughts about uh, tech support. But the probably the uh, the first question which comes to your mind right now is, who the hell am I? Uh, my name is Darek Schneek, although most English-speaking folk call me Derek, so feel free. Uh, I'm a tech support specialist from cloudaccess.net, the former host of the official Joomla demo. I'm also the team leader for the Polish, uh, for the Polish branch of our support staff. Personally, I'm a, si I'm a singer. I sing in a heavy metal band called Headbanger. Uh, I'm a major geek. I love Star Trek. I love Star Wars. I love Farscape. I love, I love, love Stargate, but not Stargate Universe. That sucks. Uh, and well, all the good stuff, all the comics, uh, video games, you name it. And well, and I'm also a, a gamer since I was like yay big and my brother gave me his old Amiga uh, 1200 computer. Yes, it, yes, it is. It's actually still, still, it still works actually. Although my nephew now has it. Okay, so uh, this uh, this presentation will be broken uh, down into two major components: support seen from the company's perspective, so uh, crucial points in forming and uh, first creating your support tech support department. Uh, how to handle initial training of well your first team and the newcomers that uh, come as you expand your uh, support department and uh, what is most important uh, during extended periods maintaining a level of excellence or as i call it maintaining a rel a relatively equal level of knowledge but we'll come to that later and support as seen from the client's perspective basically your do's and don'ts what to do so that your support guy in example for example me will love you and what to do to make your support guy hate you. So, first of all, four, four pillars of uh, providing good support. First, knowledge. Seems logical, right? Common sense. If I don't have the knowledge about something, I can't really support it. So you have to make sure that your uh, support team is knowledgeable. Discipline. Uh, uh, when you have a tech support department, you obviously have some policies. You support this, but you don't support that. It's very important uh, to make sure that your support department follows those policies. Because, if, uh, of course, it's good for a business to, from a business standpoint, uh, from a business point of view, to go the extra mile. But the thing is, if you go the extra mile uh, once and you do not warn the client that, you know, this is extra because, I don't know, because we like you, because you've been a valued customer for God knows how many years, they will come back coming more. For example, what I've always badgered my fellow support team members about, for example, at cloudaccess.net, we only support core Joomla stuff. What comes out of the box. We don't support third-party extensions, we don't support custom coding, we don't support uh, CSS adjustments to templates and so on. We support core Joomla features. But uh, uh, but from time to time a client will approach us and you know, uh, you know I've downloaded this uh, strange template from this post-Soviet server made of Commodore 64s and it's uh, broken, but it's broken my side but I kinda fixed it but now I need to, I don't know, how to make uh, the background uh, black or white or yellow or whatever. Uh, and you know if if it's if it's at least in the template parameters, you know, in the template manager and the back end of the template, then at least we can point him to the right direction. But uh, mostly it will be, you know, it will require CSS changes, and at which point I usually am the designated asshole who has to say, uh, sorry, we don't provide that kind of support. But some of our colleagues, uh, some of my colleagues would be, um, okay, I found this and that in the console, we can probably tweak this, this and that, and the client is happy for now, but at some point, he will come back uh, and ask that, you know, now, now you know, uh, I have this problem that, you know, this uh, calendar, calendar uh, extension, that calendar module is not displaying properly in my uh, template downloaded from the post-Soviet server, uh, fix it for me. And, you know, I was, I, I, again, being the designated asshole, I say, sorry, we can't do that. It clearly falls outside of the scope of our support. 
but you did that for me then and then and now you don't then okay i'm gonna take my website and move uh, move away well ciao that's that's really the only thing i can say in that moment but it's not a good option because we're losing a client we're losing you know as a company we're losing money and i'm you know if we lose enough clients i may may you know i may for example get a less lesser paycheck so that's not good for me personally either too another thing experience same thing as with knowledge it's uh, common sense the um uh, the more experience i have the more uh, time I spend on specific issues, uh, the faster I will be able to fix them in the future. Because, you know, for example, when I started working at cloudaccess.net five years ago, diagnosing and fixing a PHP fatal error due to a miscoded extension was like, uh, okay, so what? Will I need uh, half a goat and do a rain dance or something? And right now I can see, uh, okay. Here, there you go. Uh, so yeah, that experience is very, uh, very important. Next thing, efficiency. As I said before, uh, mm, the you know, as as I said, the more I focus on a specific subject, the more cases of a specific subject I do, the faster I can do that. That's where efficiency comes in because there's nothing a client loves more than you know sending an email. Uh, oh my God, my website is down. People are dying. Please, have, something's burning. And then five minutes, five minutes later, five minutes later, he receives a response. Uh, Here you go. Your site, your website is fixed. There's nothing a client loves more, and that is efficiency, which is, uh, tr uh, truth be told, derived from the first three pillars. Okay, knowledge. What what resources should you use when uh, forming your support department? I, personally, I believe that there is no better website for uh, tutorial resources and for uh, gaining like your first basic knowledge on Joomla and WordPress too, because we host WordPress since uh, some time now, is definitely lynda.com. Uh, th those are paid tutorials, those are video tutorials, but not only video, everything is also transcribed to text, but these are video tutorials, so if you, you know, if you learn better by viewing how something's done, then you see it, they explain everything very clearly, their video tutorials are um, they're branched into, you know, different levels of, uh, ex uh, experience, you know, what, what exactly do you need? The, you have, you do have to pay for them, but, uh, that's an investment that will definitely pay off because I can honestly say that if it wasn't for lynda.com, I probably wouldn't be working with Joomla right now. Because when I first started working at cloudaccess.net, I had literally no idea about Joomla. So they, uh, me and my friend who started the support department as we know it today, uh, we had literally no idea what Joomla, well, we had an idea what Joomla is, but we didn't know what to do with it, what, how to work it. Uh, so what, are, what did our company do? They purchased the video tutorials from lynda.com. I know it sounds like an advertisement or something, but really, they're not paying me. I really think they're awesome. Uh, uh, our own OSM managed uh, internal resources, so docs.joomla.org, the official Joomla Wikipedia, and forum.joomla.org, the official community forum. Um, I, I uh, usually send people who like want uh, help with the third-party extensions, which we don't support. I always tell them, sorry, no can do, but please go to forum.joomla.org. I'm sure that there's somebody there who will know what your problem is. I've used it. Uh, I've I've used it myself when I don't know a friend helped me to ask with his website, and I'm not really a designer. I don't you know I don't create websites. I fix them. I migrate them. Stuff like that. I don't create them per se. So when I needed help, I always always went to forum.joomla.org and always received the help I needed. Uh, last but not least, and actually in the long term, I believe the most important resource that you have is your own internal resources, the knowledge of your senior support operatives. Because uh, if, you, if you have an already established core support team and you're expanding the team because you know, you have a, you're gaining more clients and you need more support operators to help them. Uh, so the best way to have the new guys learn what to do, I mean, if, if they know the basics of Joomla, because if not, then 
go to lynda.com. But after that, when once they get the grasp of the basics, I mean, yeah, I know that net etiquette says that you should first Google things. But you know, you can Google things when you're searching for something for yourself and you're doing it on your own free time. But when you have a client who needs your help and he's paying you his hard-earned cash to get that help, you don't have the time to screw around Google, uh, read forums, uh, message boards, uh, PM friends, or something like that. No, what you should do then, you should uh, uh, you should excuse yourself from the customer, put yourself on hold, and go ask a more experienced person because they what you will spend I don't know even ten minutes uh, searching on uh, on Google. They will tell you right off the bat. And that's why I, I believe that internal company resources, the, the knowledge of your senior support members in the long term is the most important resource for gaining knowledge. Now, discipline. Why, why do you really need discipline in a support team? I mean, it's, you know, it's not like the army. Two very important things. Good support versus bad support. The art of saying no and not leaving the client uh, barehanded. The thing I said before, as I, uh, if a client asks me to help him with uh, Sobe Pro, for example, or uh, any other third-party extensions, then I, uh, I have to tell him no. Because, as I said, we don't, we just don't support it. So it's not in our policies. It never was, and it's never going to happen. And if it will go, and if it is going to happen someday, I will probably cut my wrists. Uh, but I, I just, I don't just tell them no, no, sorry, get out. No, because that's a, that's goddamn rude. B, even if you're saying no as a support tech uh, operator, you still have to be helpful. For the client so what I would do I would uh, but you know I would say I'm sorry I cannot help you here here is our service level agreement you see that it's not here but if you go there link to the developers support site or there forum.joomla.org then I'm sure that between those two websites you will find the answer you're looking for so see, see, see what I did there? I followed the policies. I didn't waste my time because it would be wasting my time, which I will explain uh, a little while later. I didn't waste my time, not the client's time, but I did at least point him in the right direction. That's good support because just saying no would be uh, bad support. Second thing, the ability to look at the bigger picture. The client being happy is not counterintuitively, not always. A good thing. Again, with uh, let's this time let's go with custom coding. A uh, client asks me to I don't know translate an extension for him. I know how to do that. Uh, I've done things like that before for my own use. So you know I can do it. And if I would do it for the client, then he would be extra happy. But I would have one very happy client. That I gave, uh, that I gave to something that he doesn't really, he shouldn't really get. And on the other hand, I have 10 miserable clients who, it, who in that time could get the help which they paid for. So, uh, as you know, what's, what's, what's better to have one happy client, uh, one extra happy client and 10 uh, pissed off clients or to have 20 just happy clients bigger picture experience so again the extended training maintaining an equal relative knowledge level uh, what does that mean uh, something I observed uh, within the five years I worked at cloudaccess.net well it's logical that our knowledge increased over time we learned new tricks we learned new things new bug fixes came out uh, uh, and stuff like that but what what is important, what is very important, is that we, as the me and uh, Lukas Cieszelski and uh, Irfan Musani and other uh, senior support operatives, uh, what was important that we didn't keep those fixes to ourselves because that would be destructive. What we did is that when we found, uh, like, the, uh, for example, like there was this uh, specific issue on certain, when certain circumstances and update from 
the Joomla 3.1.5 to 3.2 would result in a PHP fail error and the uh, in certain circumstances and the uh, uh, the way out of this was that you needed to go into the um, libraries folder, uh, go to I think the remember the remember plugin, delete one file, replace it with another, then run a finalization URL from the from the browser and stuff like that. So you know when we found that out, me me and uh, my colleague Lukas Tuchelski, we didn't keep it to ourselves. We immediately documented it put it in our uh, own internal knowledge base in our intranet and email the entire team go look at it you will need it the same thing when uh, for example when we first started uh, supporting WordPress again we went to lynda.com for video tutorials but that's more for end users we needed to know more so for example when uh, when a uh, WordPress plugin uh, throws a PHP fail error you also have to disable it from the database but um, well we only supported WordPress for like week uh, a week or so we don't really know how to do that so we go to so we ask Uncle Google we get the uh, we get the idea how to do that again we document it, we put it in the internal knowledge base, we send it to the team. We do, uh, I, I actually did a video tutorial on that. Uh, we send, it, uh, send an email to the team, mandatory, you must read it. If you will not, I will find out, I will find you, and I will kill you. So that's uh, for maintaining an equal, as I said, equal relative level of knowledge. Because of, you start from this level, and you know, some support operators will go like that, some will progress a little slower. No, as an entrepreneur, you cannot abide by that. You have to make sure that the relative level of knowledge between your support operators is equal. Uh, and again, experience, increased efficiency. The more I know, the more often I do it, the faster I do it. So uh, if, if I remember I was terrified of doing migrations when I uh, started working with Joomla because I, I was a Kiba retarded. I, I don't know till this day, I don't know why, but I could not work a Kiba. Right now I can, but back then I just couldn't. I don't know why. So I had to always do them manually and I was terrified of it. But my manager was like, no way, do it. But I'm scared, do it. And I did it, and I did it, and I did it, and I did it for, I don't know, 20 or 50 times. Now I've done hundreds of migrations, and I can basically do them in my sleep. Efficiency. Uh, we know why efficiency is important, but how to actually, uh, how to actually create it. Predefined replies. Uh, also called canned responses, but I don't really like that name. It has like a pejorative uh, ring to it. But, <clears throat> um, so sometimes clients uh, actually can get offended by them because they can see that you know there's something fishy here it doesn't look like a tailored response but <clears throat> but really if you have like a uh, hundreds hundred tickets per day where you have to um i don't know uninstall tell a client how to uninstall an extension or provide instructions on how to point his domain name over to our hosting it doesn't make a bit of sense to type it all manually every single time. That's why we have predefined replies. Click, click, click. A set of instructions pops out and you just fill in the gaps. For example, the IP address of this particular server to which he has to point the A record or uh, the correct, the exact procedure in each Joomla version, how to, I don't know, install an extension or create an article or whatever. Uh, it's uh, again, it's frequent issues, stonewalls. It's not like you know, uh, it's not you will never have a predefined reply for everything because it is simply impossible. But you will, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, but you will find that there is a certain set of problems with Joomla that clients have on a regular basis, and for them, you can create those predefined replies. And uh, the efficiency will skyrocket. I mean, that's, as I said before, there's nothing a client loves more than receiving a response, uh, like after five minutes. Like most, ho most hosting companies, I've, um, well, let's not be afraid of the word espionaged. Uh, so, you know, created an account to check out how they do business. You know, I can gather, I can gather ideas how to improve our own, uh, uh, how to improve uh, our own techniques. <clears throat> have a response time 
about, well, eight hours is great. 12 hours, 12 to 16 hours is usual. 24 hours is, well, still bearable. Our, our usual response time is 10 minutes. And I'm not kidding you. Our usual response time is 10 minutes. If you have to wait an hour for a response from us, then you really know that we're stoned or like, you know, um, but what, what? And we have to research God knows who and God knows what to actually, you know, you have a serious problem when you have to wait an hour for a reply from us. All because of these predefined replies and automated systems. Uh, <clears throat> for example, I've heard that uh, there's this uh, hosting company in Poland co called uh, home.pl. Uh, and uh, uh, a friend of mine used to work there as a system administrator and uh, he once told me that there was a time that when they wanted to assign a domain name to a hosting package, they had to do it manually via the command line. That's, that, you know, they had, they had to go to the Apache configuration file, rewrite it, reload the server and shit like that. Uh, that's, so, pardon my French, but that's bullshit. Uh, at cloudaccess.net, we have a single button that, that does that within our uh, administrator GUI. And right now, e uh, even our clients have the ability to do that via a single button, change the domain name because we've recently introduced that to, uh, to our hosting panel. Just you. WHMCS. WHMCS. Yep, precisely. Uh, we, use, uh, we use WHMCS. So, uh, just, you know, just, Paste in the uh, paste in the domain name, click change domain, magic, 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 done. Just wait for the DNS record propagation. That's it. Because you know how how home PL used to do that is is bullcrap. Manually, everything manually. No. You want to you want to impose a situation where your support operators will do uh, the least of the the, the least of what's possible in within command line. You should always strive for everything to have a nice clickable uh, GUI because it, it, it increases efficiency. I mean, a lot can be said about, you know, how doing things manually will make you a better support operator and it will make, make you understand it, uh, understand the processes better. Bullshit. You want to be a system administrator? Go train at the system administrator's department. You want to be a programmer? Go learn at the develop, development uh, department. You're a support guy. Your job is to provide the answer, the uh, the thing that the client wants, the thing that the client needs. He doesn't really care what's going on behind the trenches. Uh, most support operators won't have to know that too. I mean, it helps, yes. Uh, I would lie if I say that it doesn't help in certain situations, but it's not not something that's really vulnerable. As a bonus, the teddy bear rule. Uh, there's this uh, there's this story uh, uh, circling certain certain Polish companies. There's this one company nobody knows what its name was. That right outside of their uh, support room, they had a little table on which lay a teddy bear. The teddy bear was the tier zero tech support specialist. If a tech support specialist had a problem with something, then before doing anything else, he walked up to he walked up to the teddy bear, told the teddy bear, "Listen, Teddy, I have a problem with this and that." The teddy bear had like eighty percent of solved cases. What? Uh, what? Uh, why does? Uh, why does this work? It's uh, actually you know it's a cheap trick, but it but it works. Uh, saying your problem out problems out loud makes your brain look at it from a totally different perspective. I, I myself have on many occasions caught myself on, you know, sitting in front of my laptop and oh, 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 holy crap, how do I, how do I fix this? And then I, then I started talking aloud, okay, so this is not working, so this is stupid. And then I proceeded on to fixing it. Okay, now, the part of the presentation which talks from, which talks about support from the clients perspective what uh, how to make your support guy love you you want uh, you want uh, your support guy to answer you with a smile and preferably be a pretty asian woman like the one in the picture please do follow those steps stay calm we we really want to help you we really do i mean you know that's how we buy our bread and butter 
that's how we live we want to help you because when you're happy you perhaps you get some more clients for us you rec you recommend us to some friends we have more clients i get more money because of that and we're all happy we really want to help you but we will not be able to help you if you will uh, if you'll come in all guns blazing shouting screaming uh, calling us names first of all is that if you do that then i have the right to give you two warnings and if and i have if after the third warning you won't stop i have do have the right to hang up and secondly that thing is distracting as hell I, I really, you know, we can't really think clearly, especially if we have to look into the database, find some table, find some row and, you know, fix something because an extension is uh, broken and the servers are on fire. You shouting, you making us nervous is really not helping. I know, of course, I know that, you know, uh, you don't really have to give a crap because, you know, you're ner you're nervous and... Uh, you know, you have the right, of course, to be nervous if something is broken, especially if it's the hosting company's fault, which does sometimes happen. But by shouting at us, calling us names, you're not really helping yourself. <laughs> State your problem in a clear and orderly fashion. Damn it, I'm a tech support guy, not a clairvoyant. If you call me, and you say uh, my website is broken then the only thing i can say to you is uh well i feel for you man as you know and especially if i ask again okay so what is what's exactly what's exactly going on is 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 a sub page not working or is the website not loading at all or i don't know you're seeing only portions of the website what exactly is broken well the website yeah, let me get get my magic eight ball. Maybe then I'll churn some answers for you. Please do tell me what's going on. Again, I do want to help you, but I but I have to get I have to have something to work with. A screenshot is I cannot overstate the value of a screenshot because even even if you uh, even if you explain your problem and tell us how to replicate the issue in step by step. Chances are that the problem is intermittent. So, you know, if we re retract your steps, we might not be able to see it. Or, for example, in cases that um, a client call, a client calls me up and uh, he tells me that uh, his domain name is still pointing to his old website. I check it and the DNS records have only been, it's working for me, but I check it and the DNS records are, you know, have only been changed like an hour ago or like 10 minutes ago. Well, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it can't work for the entire world because DNS records take usually two to six, but up to 48 hours to propagate all around the world. Yeah, that's, that's, that too. Um, but, um, but as I, but uh, yeah, but 48 hours is usually the, the maximum. I've, uh, I've, I've never seen anybody use uh, no, no, that's uh, I'm not talking about TTL. I'm, I'm uh, talking about, uh, for example, an A records propagation uh, on DNS servers all around the world. Yeah. Yeah. You, can, you can get on ISP and an internet service providers so who cache it not only your server but also their servers and their. For servers. yeah, and some some ISPs actually have their own DNS caches which are refreshed, uh, for example, once a week. I. I uh, and I, I am not exaggerating, really. I, I've, I've really had situations when I had to tell, tell, my, tell my clients, you know, uh, call your ISP because, you know, I've done a trace route. I've been on what's my DNS, uh, dot net. I've uh, checked the A record propagation. Everything's fine. It has to be your ISP. Okay. And 10 minutes later, he called me. Okay, yeah, thanks, man. It's working now. But sometimes in those issues, I wouldn't be able to figure out what the hell is going on without a screenshot. Because, you know, the client will show me on the screenshot that, you know, or do a screencast that, yes, I did clear my browser cache. I did clear my browser cookies. I did, I don't know, do uh, dance the hula, whatever it takes to fix the issue. But it's still not working. But, okay, so this gives this can give me a clue to what what to do next. And... Error messages really do mean something. I mean, for example, this error message for me it doesn't mean anything. I don't know what does it mean, but 
<coughs> sorry, but for whoever working with that particular application which generated that error, then this error message would be like, oh, okay, click. So uh, when, I, uh, when a client, uh, I don't know, tells me that he can't log in to his Joomla backend, but he doesn't tell me that he received a JLIP authentication error, if he did, then I could, I wouldn't have to even troubleshoot it. I could go, go right off the bat to the database and re-enable the Joomla authentication or the Joomla user plugin, depending on what did he and his tumbling turned off or, or, or a host of, you know, other error messages. We told it, but these are really, these really do mean something for us. And again, in general, remember, we really do want to help you but you also have to it's on in your own best interest to give us something to work with and now how to make your support guy hate you uh i've sometimes had this face when uh talking to certain clients because well whenever you're working with uh people you will uh you will encounter those who are smarter and those who are well less so, for all support guys, everywhere, at any time, at any point, on any continent, at any point of time, please do not do that. Again, don't shout. It's unnecessary. It distracts, it distracts us. And furthermore, if you really piss us off, it gives us an excuse to hang up. So it's really bad for, you know, both parties. We will check the obvious, obvious first, no matter what, because you know sometimes, sometimes the uh, the problem is even if even if the client is knowledgeable, sometimes the problem is so obvious that just, it, it just won't come to mind. Uh, sometimes uh, the client didn't check at all, or uh, but he does have some. Uh, I don't know. For example, um, you know what? My logo is showing in a different color. I'm sure it's uh, the fault of the server. Well, no, sir, but just check the server, but just check the server. Okay, I've checked it. It's not the server. That's the only thing I can really do. So, you know, it's not that we think that you're an idiot and you didn't check the obvious first. It's just you always have to start with the obvious because, A, it takes the least time to troubleshoot. So if it is something obvious, we will have it fixed like that. And secondly, it's just, it's just good practice to always, you know, start with the obvious so you can later, you can re retrace your steps doing the simple things. And if that doesn't work, then we will move to troubleshooting further. Then we will investigate more in depthly. But the obvious, that is what we need to do first. Don't try to solicit services that the company doesn't provide. So basically, don't ask for things that are outside of your support and service level agreement. Because uh, first of all, uh, whenever, you, whenever you do that, know that somewhere out there, there is someone like me who is the designated asshole for his company who has to uh, feel, ba feel bad for answering no for the nth time in a day. <clears throat> and secondly, you'll be known as that client. You know, we just, it's, uh, uh, for Christ's sake. And what's strange, your response time may suddenly, uh, you know, may suddenly, you know, grow bigger and you'll be waiting because, you know, it's, I know I'm not, I'm not supposed really to say such things, but it's the harsh reality. If I don't see a, if I see two tickets and one is from a client I hate and one is from a client I like, I will take, I will first take the ticket from the client I like. And I know that he will ask for a reasonable thing within the service level agreement and he will thank me for it and, uh, you know, I'll be happy, he'll be happy, we'll all be happy. But then I will have a person who, for example, has called me an asshole in the past because, uh, you know, because I said, I said no and that has happened on several occasions. Uh, uh, and B, I will know that he will ask for something that I'm not even trained for because we don't do that. So, you know, but so, you know, I just leave it, oh, somebody else will get it, eventually. Don't ask to speak to the manager right off the bat. Again, you'll be known as that 
uh, kind of client. I mean, of course, there are some times which you have to speak to the manager because, for example, uh, he's taken he's taken over your case, uh, or he's the specialist in that particular area of uh, what exactly do you need. But if you just go, uh, yeah, okay, uh, you know, just ah, yeah, I'm sure you won't be able to help me with it. Just you know, you're definitely not able to help me with it. Just get me get me your manager. Uh, you think you're you think you're punishing the the support operator and uh, telling him that you know he's stupid or incompetent. No, what what you're really doing is you're uh, you're shifting your problem to somebody who a doesn't have to really care about your problem because his uh, his responsibilities lie in training us and maintaining us and you know our responsibility is to make you happy, not his. B you're shifting your problem to somebody who will face absolutely no consequences after telling you to go to hell. So, not, not really a good idea. Don't tell me you're sure it's a very simple thing. If it's, A, if it's a simple, th if it's a simple thing, go freaking fix it yourself and allow me to help people who are less knowledgeable than yourself. And secondly, if I see, um, Ah, for example, if I uh, see broken language strings on a newly created Joomla 3.4 uh, instance with some uh, with some extension that is compatible with Joomla 3.4 installed, and language strings are showing without the text, just you know, bear com underscore whatever. No, it's not a simple thing because first I have to, f you know, I have to find out why the hell did it install incorrectly because that's the most probable option. Uh, are the permissions wrong? Are the file ownership wrong? Is is the FTP layer misconfigured for that hosting package or whatever? It's not simple. And if I tell you that, I'm sorry, sir. There's no really, there's really no use uh, for keeping you on the phone because I will have to take some time to research the matter. Once I'm done, I will call you back. And but and then you go. But I'm sure it's a very simple thing. You can probably fix it like in ten seconds on the phone. No, sir. If I could have, if I could have, I would have. But I can't, so I shan't. Really, if I if I tell you it's more complicated, and I do have to. Uh, and and the worst thing you can do in that matter is. So can you transfer me to somebody who's uh, who's smarter than you? To uh, to quote the classic Terence and Phillips from uh, South Park. Well, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> My friend thinks I'm a computer genius. The the truth is, I can I know how to use Google, and that's uh, that's true true of us too. When we you know, there's no magical manual that they only give us the support people, and you, the lowly commoners, the end users, will never have access to it. No, it's everything on the web, on the web, and even with our extensive training, even with the, with our um, with our experience, we do still sometimes have to defer to the forums. Still have to search. For example, a new bug in the new in the, in the new version of Joomla just came out, and you know that's the first time we see it. We have we have to find you know go on the forums see if somebody's found a uh, somebody's found a fix for it yet, or is there a patch incoming for it, or or whatever. So you know, it's not it's not really magic. So you could also send sa sa save your own, own time by trying to Google around a bit. And I'm I'm not saying that to you know lessen my workload or anything because I'm happy to help you with your problems if you know if you follow <laughs> the rules I've laid out. But the thing is, you know, you call or you submit a support ticket, then you uh, wait the turnaround time to receive a response, even if it's uh, only the ten minute turnaround time, which usually is at cloudaccess.net. It still would could have been faster if you just Googled and took, uh, you know, two minutes because that's, you know, for example, if it's an obvious fix, then it, it, will, mm, it will take you two minutes to find, to find a fix for it. So it could, to, it could take so, so such, such a small amount of time to you as well if you only know how to use Google. And that's it. Thank you very much. So, are there, are there any questions? Seven, seven seconds rule. Okay, thank you.